shake it flipping through my phone But all it does is make me feel more alone How can anything that feels so wrong be right? Seven billion voices separate us But only one can show us who we are We are
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus and welcome to our special Mass of promoting uh, life. We're going to give thanks to God for the gift of life today. Um, on January 25th in Medjugorje, Our Lady gave a message, and part of that message was, this is a time of awakening. This is a time to give birth, giving birth to our faith anew by opening our hearts to the very gift that we have been given, the Spirit of God within our hearts. And the more we connect with that Spirit within us, the more that we recognize how much we are loved, then we are able in faith, in hope, in love, to reach out to our brothers and sisters and help them to recognize the dignity, the, the, the very nature that God has given them, that he's given them a piece of himself so that we can build a, a culture of life again. As, as, Pope John, or as Pope Francis has often said, let us love our brothers and sisters back into life. But it begins with our heart and then reaching out to their heart. So as we begin this celebration of Mass, uh, let us open our hearts to our risen Lord and ask him for mercy, pardon, and peace, that we may truly enter into the gift of him who comes to us at this altar to feed us, to nourish us, to help us to live out his presence in our lives. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through the Paschal Mystery, you have given us the gift of your Spirit at baptism. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through the love of the Spirit, we become your light to our brothers and sisters in the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, our creator, we give thanks to you who alone have the power to impart the breath of life as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we whom you have made stewards of creation may remain faithful to this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me. Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel.
From St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you, in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with the power through his Spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we ask or imagine, by the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you lord mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of judah where she entered the house of zechariah and greeted elizabeth when elizabeth heard mary's greeting the infant leapt in her womb 
And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I just want to say a couple words about the, the, the scriptures, and then I will introduce our guest speaker today. In the first reading we hear, we are called to be a light to the nations because we have been known since our mother's womb by the love of the God who helped create us by giving us that beautiful gift of his spiritual DNA. And who was the first to um, connect with that light? Mary. Mary, who um, conceived the woo, or conceived that light through the power of the Holy Spirit and then gave birth to that light. And through our baptism, we are called to give birth to that light. And it is Mary, our mother, that helps us to unravel this mystery of who we are. For she is our mother from the foot of the cross. And Jesus is that light that comes into us. And we kneel before the Father because he's given this beautiful power, his spirit within us. And it says the more that we open up in faith to Christ, the more we will see and experience who we are as sons and daughters of the Father and connect with that spirit, connect with that power that he has given us so that we may be a light to the nations, that we may bring the light of the good news of God's love, justice, and peace to our brothers and sisters. So this is the shortest homily I've ever given. Now the introduction is even longer than my homily. Okay, JP, my angel here. Thank you. So, Cheryl Collier. Cheryl has been the executive director of pastoral ministries for the Diocese of Buffalo for the past 11 years. She oversees the St. Gia Gianna Pregnancy Outreach Center behind the cathedral with four additional locations in Cataractes, Chautauqua, Erie, and Niagara counties that she has co-founded as a volunteer in 2009. She also heads up the Project Rachel Ministry and the Hope and Healing Retreat with our clergy. The Sidewalk Advocates for Life in Western New York was one of the first under her direction in the country, and she has spoken on the national level for them at the annual Women's Pro-Life Convention. She has also been sought out as a speaker for the USCCB and recently represented them at the convocation as a panelist. Wow, that's interesting. Cheryl is also involved with end-of-life issues, the opiate crisis, 
and, in, and internal public policy liaison for the Diocese of Buffalo. Her latest endeavor is the Mother Teresa Home that was dedicated in the Year of Mercy in 2016. It serves moms and families involved in unplanned and unsupported pregnancy. In recent collaboration, addi collaborative additions, Cheryl is now serving the Cultural Diversity Ministry as well as family life and marriage preparation in her pastoral offices. She and her husband David of 27 years moved in the empty rectory in the inner city of Buffalo to help oversee renovations in May of 2015 and have been blessed by an outpouring of support for the Mother Teresa Home Ministry that opened in 2016 and has served 55 mothers and 57 babies to date. Cheryl is putting her past business and marketing skills to the test, one person at a time with love. She has been blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Wow, what a bio, Cheryl. It's, it's just a, a pleasure and an honor to have you here today. She is a woman that has a hat with many gifts, and she's here to talk about uh, part of that, uh, part of the gifts that she has. But she is a very round, a rounded person, well-rounded person with many gifts that the Lord has inspired her to share with our diocese and, abroad, and further on. So without ado, let us welcome Cheryl Collier. You can go up here, and then you get to look down. You're welcome. Wow, I've never been this tall. <laughs> this is terrific. I just wanted to um, thank Father for inviting me here today and the opportunity that I also had uh, before Mass to talk to um, the wonderful committee that's um, going to be commissioned in regards to working the life issues. Um, Embarrassingly, uh, I humbly tell you, with all of the things that were mentioned that I do, um, I do them because I feel that I've been called to do them. And we often hear those words, God, please let me know um, what, you've call what you're calling me to do. Let me know what I should be using my gifts and talents for. Um, I don't know about you, but I often I heard the call, but I ignored it, or I heard the call, and I put it on hold and said, yeah, I'll get to that some other time, or better yet, let it go to voicemail, then I can do it whenever I want. But it wasn't until that I really um, hit a moment in my life where the life issue really became predominant right in front of my face. And that is something that, um, an issue that many people don't like to talk about, um, the abortion issue. However, we even hear in our readings today how it was the leap in the womb that is the core of our faith. And for me personally, that is something that happened to me uh, with one of my children in an unplanned pregnancy. So I can tell you from experience that you can take those little nuggets that God is putting before you and you can use them for the greater good because I'm not special at all. I just decided to answer the call. So I ask, as we're forming these committees here in this beautiful community in Olean, think about some of the life issues that you might want to be involved in. We know the mercy of Christ. We see it on the doors right here in the church and how even if somebody has experienced the abortion issue, whether they've had one, they've been a part of it by taking somebody or encouraging someone, that the beauty of our faith is the mercy that Christ shows for each and every one of us, particularly those who have been touched with this issue. 
There are so many issues connected with life. We do a good job as a church telling people that they should choose life. But what are we doing to support them when they do? And that's what brought us to the Mother Teresa home and the idea. Um, I didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, David, let's move into the inner city and open up a ministry. But what I did say, what can we do to make a difference? And I'm not asking all of you to go open up a ministry tomorrow, although that would be nice. Um, what I'm saying is, whatever you're doing now for the life issue, whether it be the opiate crisis, physician-assisted suicide, uh, immigration reform, the refugees, human trafficking, the myriad of things that entail end-of-life decisions in all of our families. If you're doing nothing other than punching out the ticket when you come to Mass, I ask you, do something. And if you're doing something, do a little more. And if you're already doing a little more, take it to that next level. And you will not be disappointed because God will not abandon us when he calls us to spread his good news. Keep in mind to let others see Christ in you and you see Christ in them. That is the joy of our faith in the acronym Jesus First, then others, then yourself. So once again, I thank you for having me come in, speak especially um, why we're not at the March for Life this year. Even though we're not physically there, it's even more of an opportunity for us to have a real prayerful time to think about the importance of each and every life. God bless you and thank you so much for having me. And thank you, Cheryl, for being that shining light, bringing all this beautiful gift of um, uplifting everyone and, and helping them to be a light in their own way. And now we're ready for the commissioning of our, our linked committee on pro-life from both of our parish families. I ask Father David to, to join me. And as we stretch out our hands over all of you, thank you for your beautiful words, Cheryl, and also know that how your life-giving ways have touched so many. And we thank you for being in our community, and we look forward to many visits in the future from you. Dear Almighty and all-loving God, we praise you, the author of all life, for helping us to be a people who choose life and are born to be life-giving through all our words and deeds. We ask that you bless all of us, and especially these individuals who step forward from our linked parish communities to choose life. Grace the work of these who represent all of us, these individuals who now come and stand before you. Diane D. Checky. Mary Saigon. Jennifer Forney. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Michael Forney. Anita Schmidt. Deacon Matthew Wenke. I now ask all of us to extend your hand of blessing upon these to be commissioned today for our, leap, our linked parish pro-life committee. Father of all life, we thank you for having called each of us into being and making us all a people called your own, a people who choose life. Bless our brothers and sisters who stand with and for us as we dedicate ourselves to be a voice for the voiceless, a defense for the defenseless, a strength for the vulnerable at all stages and phases of life. In a special way, we ask you to help us to protect the lives of our tiniest members of society and the most vulnerable, the unborn. We also ask that you help us to mirror your love, mercy, respect, and compassion to those entering the world by accompanying them throughout their lives while helping to address their needs as you embrace us all in your care. May we celebrate all of your creation by pledging our care and life-giving response as you are love and life itself. By our example, and our imitation of you, we ask you, our dear almighty God, to send these committee members forth, to send all of us forth, enable us to proclaim, celebrate, and serve the gospel of life. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. stand and present all our petitions before the throne of the Father, asking Jesus, our risen Lord, to hear and answer them through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. For Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, religious, and deacons, that they may be strengthened to lead our church into a deeper respect for life and become witnesses to the goodness of life in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected officials, that the Holy Spirit would inspire them to enact laws that defend and promote the right to life of all human beings, especially those not yet born. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the world, that all people may recognize and treat each person as a masterpiece of God's creation, with dignity and respect, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of love that the world, that the Lord would give each of us the grace to choose what is good and pleasing in the eyes of God and to build a kingdom of justice tempered with the mercy of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intercession of Saint Joseph, that in this year consecrated to him as the protector and pillar of families, he will nurture our relationships of faith, hope, and love in our homes and in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intercession of Saint Gianna Mola, that our parish ministry, dedicated to helping women in need, may give new hope and new life for those who struggle to survive. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for our newly formed pro-life committee, that they will be a light not only to our linked parishes, but to the greater Olean community, a light to bringing that good news that we are all loved by a God who created us in his image and likeness, and to help one another to support one another in, in every way we can, from the womb to the tomb, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us take a moment of silence to lift up all your intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, who gave us new life in the Spirit, that Spirit that comes into our hearts as a light to reveal who we are, your sons and daughters. Help us to live up to that dignity by sharing that good news with others. And so, Father, we have confidence that you are hearing and answering all our requests in your Son's name and in the power of the Spirit. Through the intercession of Joseph and Mary, through the intercession of all the angels and saints who gather with us, to worship with us, to intercede for us, and to walk with us on our journey if we but call out their names, especially our guardian angels. And as always, Father, we lift everything up in that name above all names, the reason why we can be here to worship today, the healer, the teacher, the savior, the Messiah, the redeemer, Emmanuel, the Lord of lords and the King of kings, Jesus, who is our brother. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our humble offerings, O Lord of the living, and unite us to the perfect sacrifice of your Son, through whom you have made all creation new who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the holy martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we utter those words that go directly to the heart of our Heavenly Father. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us take a moment to offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Peace, John. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite the guardian angels of those who hunger to receive our Lord and cannot receive him to come and take a particle of my host to bless them and to feed them, whether they're homebound, in nursing home, in shelters, in prison, sick in hospital, but especially for all those who are dying throughout the world this day, those who are hungering for the presence and the mercy of God, his love, that their angels may come feed them the bread of life, that they may be embraced by our Lord to take them to eternal life to the bosom of the one who created them, the Father. For nothing is impossible to God when we have faith and we believe. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Increase your love within us, Lord God, by the saving mysteries we have celebrated, and bring people everywhere to respect your gift of human life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We want to thank our guest, Cheryl Collier, for coming all the way from Buffalo to <coughs> be with us. I do want to share a little, uh, little ditty here. Um, when I first got the bright idea to invite her to come down, a light bulb went on my, uh, from my head before Christmas. And I called her office and they had to apply online. So I had Katie help me to apply for you to come down. And then I was so excited. I just thought, oh, this is going to happen no matter what. And when I went to go to the Divine Mercy at the chapel, Mary said, oh, this might be not as easy as you think. And I said, well, there won't be a March for Life this year. She'll be free. Uh, she still has a lot to, on her plate. But I said, you know what? Mary will intercede. And sure enough, she interceded. So we thank Mary for bringing Cheryl down to us today. What a beautiful talk that you gave, a beautiful message. You are true, a, a, truly a shining light in our diocese. So thank you very much for all you do. Do you have any parting words? No? Okay. He's speechless. Whoa! <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Now I always say a Hail Mary and a St. Michael prayer afterwards so that we may have their intercession to help us uh, as we walk out those doors. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a good day. Good evening, everyone. And I thank everybody at home who joined us, too. God bless you. Oh